नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स दे टॉपिक टुडे इज रियली ए वास्ट वास्ट टॉपिक एंड जस्ट टू कीप इट कंडेंस्ड एंड कीप इट विद इन टाइम आई हैव मेड ए पावर पॉइंट presentation uh, and this is one of the nice slides about namaste i honor the place in you that is same in me that sameness you know, that it is uh, that space which is same in you and in me I honor the place in you where the whole universe resides. I honor the place in you of love, of light, of peace and of truth. I honor the place in you that is the same in me. There is but one. Namaste. so this is the origin of this idea uh, or the practice namaste to salute uh, everything seeing god in them feeling the divinity uh, in both uh, the one who is saying namaste and to whom uh, this namaste is being said in both of them Uh, one tries to feel the sameness the what is the same the uh, reality that is occupying both that same one reality is the uh, actually uh, directed when one says this word namaste and you see this idea in all different religions as well uh, like and the native americans you see one of the uh, very well known native american prayers is uh, that i uh, give you this one thought to keep i am with you still i do not sleep i am a thousand winds that blow i am the diamond glints on snow i am the sunlight on the ripened green i am the gentle autumn rain when you awaken in the morning's hush i am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circle flight i am the soft stars that shine at night do not think of me as gone i am with you still in each new dawn i am with you i am in all in every pulsation of our awareness i am there the divine source of everything and uh, this idea of god in everything is actually the uh, goal of our life uh to experience this oneness or sameness in everything from the universe to the invisibly minute subatomic particles everything is brahman uh, that which is uh, in quote marks is actually from uh, one of the upanishads that yes Uh, the whole universe as well as the smallest particle that you can see it is the one divine principle that is pervading in everything everything is brahman this immanent nature of god god in everything uh, that is uh, the goal uh, the as the shri ramakrishna always would insist that the goal of human life is to realize god because that is where a person can find fulfillment till that is done there is 
no fulfillment in life there could be many other achievements uh, and maybe those achievements are great and glorious but none of them can bring a total sense of fulfillment in life there will still be craving left there will still be uh, this wants will still be left there and therefore uh, none of those can be goal of life but this when you experience this all pervading oneness then uh, the cravings are all gone forever and therefore that is the goal of life and this goal is you will see that this idea is not just with hindus as i presented that with uh, the native americans that idea is there so also we see that uh, in genesis in bible you read god created man in his own image and breathed his breath into man that it is uh, in every being there is this divine principle present uh, god is in everything and specially it is said about human beings because of after all you know uh, the bible was not written uh, for or not presented uh, for birds and cows and this. it is presented for human beings so the special emphasis is given on human beings and also serve your neighbor as yourself and uh, that is you f- just as you feel uh, the essence of divinity or life in you uh, feel the same in the other person as well so this is the the thought you will find uh, present in all faiths that god is in everyone in everything and to realize that is the goal and uh, it begins with this recognition that yes everything is having the same one principle one has to begin uh, with this recognition so uh, you see this is idea that is presented this namaste idea by uh, two great uh, i mean two uh, teachers uh, one is lance secretan is a globally known leadership uh, this thing and in management consultant born and based initially in uk and later in canada and runs this secretan's uh, center for leadership training and other is pastor ed d smith senior this is in macedonia baptist church in macon uh, georgia and he has been also a member of different civic bodies uh, and the cancer uh, this uh, research centers and other uh, various organizations so both of them you will see in videos uh, that will be shown here uh, that how both of them have insisted on uh, this practice of namaste uh, can you put on the videos you will see them one after another in our organization we have a word that we use a lot when we greet each other it's namaste it's an indian word you'll hear indian people they will say to each other when they greet each other namaste and what it means is a greeting of honor sacredness to each other what we're actually saying to each other is this i honor the place in you where the entire universe resides i honor the place in you of love of light of truth of peace i honor the place within you where if you are in that place in you and i am in that place in me there is only one of us namaste we sign all our emails that way we talk to each other at the end of our com- Christmas and our meetings when we say goodbye to each other we say namaste because we want everybody to know in my organization that we serve each other that we honor each other that we treat each other as sacred
who we're going to be using every Sunday from now on. In men, I need you to get it. Ladies, I want you to get it, but especially I want my men and boys to get it. N-A-M-A-S-T-E. That's a Hindu term. Namaste. Say that. Namaste. Say it again. Namaste. Namaste. Jerome means the divinity within me salutes the divinity within you. Y'all missed it. Namaste means the divinity within me salutes the divinity within you. Now flag, this simply means I recognize that Bobby has some God in him. See, many of our boys don't have any respect for life. That's why it's so easy to kill them. So when I, when I realize that Bobby got some God in him, just as I have some God in me, that will make me respect him not only physically, but I'll respect what I say about Bobby. We have not been taught to respect one another, so I need you to say it again, namaste. Say it again, namaste. The divinity within me salutes the divinity Any teaching going on here today? Yeah. And maybe that's why we have been mistreating one another for much too long. I want us to start today to say that word over and over. I want men and women, young and old, to start greeting one another instead of saying, what's happening? <laughs> young folk, when you greet somebody, namaste. Say it, say it, why? Namaste. Say it again. Namaste. What does that mean? So don't come, what's happening, bro? Because that ain't kept our boys from killing one another. They've been saying it for a long time. What's happening, bro? Bam! So you see, uh, the importance of this idea uh, in our spiritual practice and actually spiritual practice is not divorced, uh, not separate from our day-to-day -day living. Uh, in fact, uh, spiritual practice means our whole life is to be put into a spiritual discipline, uh, that mode, because that is the goal of life to see God in everything, see the same divinity in everything is the goal of life and therefore uh, we see that in Upanishads and in modern Vedanta teacher like Swami Vivekananda the emphasis on this uh, goal that to see that one same being pervading in everything uh, like you see uh, in Shvetashvatar Upanishad, he is the one God hidden in all beings, all pervading the self within all beings. This is, as you see, the most important principle that we have to practice. Spiritual life, you know, is uh, of course some intellectual understanding but more the practice of it. It is like every skill that one uh, builds up. It is not just a little understanding of it, uh, like understanding uh, that how the keys of piano are to be pressed. But you don't become pianist like that. Uh, you can read something about how to play guitar. You can't play like Peter uh, just by reading like that. It is, uh, requires practice and therefore uh, this idea that God is in me as myself and God is in everybody as their self too. Uh, what it means is the self here is the self there. Uh, again, this is against uh, all our uh, instinct. Our instinct tells us that I have a oneself 
and then say all the other people they have different different selves my self is of course always good the other people their selves hmm, let us not talk about them it is but uh, the truth is that in everyone the self is same there is no distinction in the essence in the self so therefore uh, shweta shweta upanishad uh one of the 10 or 11 important upanishads uh he mentions this that in all women in all men in all boys in all girls in every old man tottering on a stick in every bee and bird uh, that is the same you o lord have uh, manifested in all these different forms these different forms these are forms but the essence is the same one divine principle and then uh, this idea is uh, to be pushed into us our behavior is going against this idea uh, our instinctive natural Uh, animal as well as say human level behavior is centered on uh, i am special uh, i have to get all the enjoyments from the world the tendency is to go out to grab things uh, without thinking uh, this idea that actually the essence here and essence there is same so i don't really need to rush to get pleasures from the world the thought of getting pleasure from the world is actually the cause of all misery that we get in life uh, it is mentioned in by swami vivekananda right in the uh, the first page of the beautiful book karma yoga that if you see the cause of all sufferings in the world it is this that men think the pleasure uh, is the goal of life but then that pleasure we seek in the objects outside uh, while all happiness is really inside so it is like going in the wrong direction to get happiness if you analyze it is just uh, uh, wait Uh, for a moment think for a moment and uh, one can easily see this that all happiness is within it is not in uh, the outside objects which we see as objects we don't see them as the same self uh, and therefore if we go to grab them we do not get happiness from them Uh, gradually after uh, making it, uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, frustrating attempts one comes to this understanding uh, but uh, the earlier we get it is better uh, just as it, it is better to learn that well i was driving in the wrong direction uh, as early as possible uh, not after going hundreds of miles and then oh my goodness i was going in the wrong direction and that means you have to come back another 100 miles so a uh, better to learn this uh, that it is the source of all happiness is actually uh, within and so uh, this idea therefore is to be uh, cultivated to make our lives really blissful really happy uh, this is Uh, therefore taught by the scriptures scriptures many times it is thought that they are telling us about something other worldly that well uh, after you die what will happen and so forth uh, no it is right here right here how to become happy uh, that is uh, do we not want to become happy right here and we want to Uh, but how to become happy here uh, we as human beings we are endowed with lot of intelligence 
but what happens is we don't use it uh, as much uh, in the right area where it should be used we use it in many useless things uh, but where it should be really used we fail to use it and therefore scriptures only tell us well use your common sense and that is uh, happiness in some of those things that you were running after do you not uh, try to see that all this material that you see around is pervaded with the same one self one spirit one single life uh, if we try to feel this we will even just searching thinking of this will make us happy uh, i can guarantee you that just think of this that all happiness is within me uh, that will that thought itself will make us peaceful as well as happy all the struggle to get something from the world uh, will subside we can uh, just find out experiment and can see so the scriptures are telling us only at this point that do you want to become happy do you want to become peaceful then uh, understand this and start going towards this goal uh, it is a matter of then practice the more practice we do uh, the more and more we imbibe this ideal this goal in our life and that is why we see that great teachers of the world have mentioned that to see uh, the god in others to serve other people uh, thinking of god in them is a spiritual practice of course it is uh, there is the philanthropic uh, uh, dimension to it but more than philanthropic dimension it is uh, the worship or the spiritual idea is very important uh, it is certainly as you see uh, swami vivekananda mentions here that after so much austerity i have i have understood this as the real truth god is present in every jeeva jeeva means the individual being Uh, there is no other god besides that who serves jiva serves god indeed a uh, jiva means this individual being who serves uh, anybody is actually serving shiva or the god uh, that is a g- great idea that uh, swami vivekananda learned uh, when shri ramakrishna was telling uh, about Uh, the principles of vaishnav uh, vaishnavism and uh, while telling that he uh, uttered first that compassion to beings as one principle but before he could complete it he went into uh, samadhi the spiritual mood spiritual ecstasy and coming down from there he said oh you yourself are uh, what uh, nobody and you who are you to show compassion and mercy to others no no not mercy or compassion but service to others uh, seeing god in them uh, seeing shiva in every jeeva and when swami vivekananda heard this he uh said that what a great light today we got uh, by the t- t- this uh, what our ma- master told us and if i this is he says that if i get a chance i will spread this message which brings the vedanta uh, in forest to the door steps of every being so this is where the vedanta comes to our door step uh, we don't have to go to big uh, some uh, caves in himalaya to practice it uh, right uh, wherever we are we can practice vedanta uh, by this 
principle and the way to uh, do that is uh, since to see god in everything is the goal all efforts will have to be directed towards it not only in the formal worship and prayers but in every action so now you can see the connection with this namaste that uh, uh, all our actions have to uh, be tuned to this goal uh, if that is the goal then uh, all our actions have to be connected to this one goal so uh, try to you know connect we have to try to connect with that reality in every action and uh, to recognize that is the first step that uh, and that recognition happens uh, with this namaste that namaste is uh, where i recognize the divine in you and salute uh, you uh, salute the divinity in you so because that is your reality that is uh, uh, i don't have to go to a temple to worship god and not that i should not go but that is not uh, the only place where i can worship uh, i can worship in the temple uh, but then what is the use of that worship if after the worship uh, i start plotting uh, against other people uh, i think of how to harass other uh, these uh, that, that is then and not really worship at all no use the spirit of that worship uh, should be continued in every action and uh, that we get that ample scope we are always in the company of god and where can we go if in the uh, suppose uh, we are think just for this sake of analogy like i am a fish in the ocean uh, where do i have got to go to search for water uh, i am right in water all the time so we are uh, always surrounded by various images of god uh, and the job is to recognize it learning to recognize uh, that is how you no know, uh, our thought process and our actions need to be trained our actions get trained our life gets trained uh, according to you know how we train our thinking that is why uh, our thinking needs to be trained and for this thinking to be get trained uh, we have to uh, keep on you see uh, hearing about it thinking about it Uh, so that the thinking uh, kind of becomes more and more concrete in our life becomes more and more established and then it inspires the corresponding actions also there is this other thing that if we go from the actions uh, yes that actions also uh, will uh, inspire the corresponding thinking uh, they are uh, supportive of each other so when uh, i am trained uh, from childhood from you know in the family in the schools uh, everywhere that uh, say namaste uh, then uh, well that thought come what is this namaste why should i say that uh, what does it mean and then that brings the thought i see that is the idea behind it and then whenever uh, i perform this action uh, that thought uh, gets a push uh, whether i uh, understand it or not but that push comes oh yes there is divinity there and so this action of namaste and the thought behind it Uh, both uh, strengthen each other uh, there is uh, this word 
and the idea behind it is so powerful. I feel uh, that this practice connected with the thought process has uh, the great power to transform our lives. It is uh, uh, Namaste, uh, this particular uh, this posture you must have seen everywhere, uh, people fold their hands, touch their palms, you know, uh, like this, in the pose Namaste. This is uh, uh, a wonder, uh, very important posture uh, in dances also. Uh, in Indian dance, uh, this posture uh, has a lot of significance. Uh, this also has, uh, is uh, called, what is called one of the mudras. This is, uh, mudra means it has uh, a significance uh, that connects you, know, to, you to, to a spiritual level. That is mudra. In worship, uh, we have many different mudras uh, to indicate a particular feeling in us uh, that gets signified that by that particular uh, posture, particular position of our fingers, our, our hand, our body, our face and all that. So this is uh, something uh, that indicates the two extremes coming together. Do you see this? Uh, they, it is uh, this left and right coming together. Uh, indicative of that in both directions, in all opposites, there is this unity uh, that gets represented by the two hands coming together. In uh, relation to each other, it also shows that I have no weapon in my hands against you. <laughs> I am not holding any weapon. That used to be uh, the idea in handshake that uh, early people used to uh, wield a sword in the right hand and then when they meet each other uh, when they see that well we are not enemies we are friends then they will put the sword in the sheets and then the right hand they will uh, have the handshake so that is uh, the idea in handshake in namaste this idea is uh, expressed uh, much more clearly without any uh, body contact. It is, Namaste, yes, I have nothing against you. Uh, this is very beautifully expressed there, that Namaste. And, well, it helps us to take the uh, small baby steps is a great help in taking at least baby steps towards the goal. Uh, the goal is far away. It may appear far away uh, that, well, God realization, uh, so many times we feel that is far, far away. And a lot of uh, arguments come against this being a goal for a common person. Uh, many times this question comes, uh, especially uh, this idea that, well, after all, how many people realize it? How many people get there? Uh, hardly any of this. Uh, tell me, of this 7.2 billion people, uh, how many are there? Now, should I go there and count how uh, it is? Uh, how to count it? Uh, yes, okay, I agree that their number is uh, very small, maybe. But why? Can I not be one of them? Is there a reason that I cannot be one of them? Uh, this argument is a, a very deceptive argument. That uh, And I had told you an incident uh, when I was traveling in a car uh, after the lectures and all uh, from St. Louis. We were going in a car to, uh, sorry, not St. Louis, from Kansas City to St. Louis. So, as we were traveling, one gentleman asked this question. In Bhagavad Gita, you read that amongst thousands, uh, one may give it a try. And amongst thousands of such who give it a try, perchance somebody gets there. 
So Swami, what do you think? How much chance do I stand? Mm, because if I don't stand chance, then why should I even make an effort? And there was another intelligent man sitting there. He gave the answer. Even before I gave the answer, he gave a very cryptic uh, but beautiful answer, very poetic answer. Mm, he just said, Yes, they say that uh, your chances of winning a lottery ticket are only minimally reduced even if you don't buy the ticket. <laughs> so, see that answer is very beautiful answer. Uh, but yet you go and buy the lottery ticket uh, that uh, maybe I will win. Uh, here, uh, not only that uh, you can be one of these uh, few, uh, but you have the chance, uh, not just a very little chance, but you have certainty. You will make it. If not today, tomorrow. Maybe day after tomorrow. Because it is not a matter of chance. Because it is our true nature. So we are sure to get there. Whether today or tomorrow doesn't matter. Till we get there, uh, our uh, philosophy tells you have to come back again and again because it is an unfinished job. So, uh, if you don't finish uh, in this lifetime, well, you will be again born and you will have to try for it again. But uh, let us um, see that there is not a particular timeline in this. Many times this question gets asked that, uh, well, how many years am I going to need for this? There is no such a timeline because it is matter of going beyond time. How can somebody say that it is uh, so many years? Uh, it is going beyond the realm of time and space. Uh, therefore, no timeline can be fixed for it. But certain practices can be of great, great help. And Namaste is one of those practices. When I say Namaste, uh, I get connected to that reality uh, in me and in you, in everything. Uh, it is uh, good to see is that uh, God in everything. But as Swami Vivekananda mentions, uh, let us try to see it in one person. If we cannot see it in everybody, let us begin. Let us make a good beginning. Uh, let us take a first step in the right direction that recognize the person that you are meeting uh, by saying Namaste. That uh, you are different from me in shape, in many attributes. Uh, I may be black, you may be white, I may be uh, American, uh, you may be, uh, say, Asian, uh, I may be from, you know, uh, following one religion, you are following another religion, uh, I may be uh, going to a Hindu temple, uh, you may be going uh, to a Catholic church or uh, a Muslim mosque or a Jewish synagogue. What does it matter? These are external attributes. The reality in all of us is uh, one and the same. Namaste is a recognition of that. Uh, first, we have to recognize it in us. Like we, our actions get uh, inspired by that recognition. Even in most ordinary things that uh, uh, you uh, wanted something and then you ask some, that somebody, Oh, uh, this particular piece of wood, uh, how ca can I find, where can I find? And that person tells, Oh, go to that shop. I had seen it there. Uh, you go there, they have it. Now, before I go, uh, start the journey to go there, uh, before I sit in the car, I recognize that it is there. Then only I can make an effort 
there is at least the possibility i recognize that it is there and then take my step so this recognition that god is there in the person that i am interacting with uh, it will remove hatred the first thing uh, it will uh, remove hatred in us uh, that yes god is in that person uh, otherwise uh, we assign a uh, the uh, permanent values to the temporary appearances we make a very big mistake in doing it uh, those things which are temporary uh, we assign permanent status to them uh, like uh, suppose you put orange juice in a glass uh, then uh, you will say that this is glass of orange juice but then it was not used only for orange juice uh, you somebody drinks the orange juice and all and then afterwards uh, say milk is put in it then that very glass gets called glass of milk so similarly a person keeps on changing but my one experience with that person might not be very pleasant and i uh, put a permanent label on that person Uh, this person hmm, uh, evil uh, very bad not good be careful and so forth uh, but what am i doing there uh, something that is changing uh, i am putting a permanent label on it this namaste helps us to transcend this to go beyond this well uh, those are changing things the permanent reality in any person is god which is same in me today maybe uh, that person's behavior was not pleasant to me but that is not the permanent feature it is changing and therefore let me recognize it as changing and direct my attention to the permanent feature which is god which is same in me so uh, that is uh, Uh, this great help of namaste second important point that it uh, does is to uh, increase our self confidence in dealing with others in interacting with others uh, when we say namaste uh, we recognize that reality um, many of us suffer from what is called inferiority complex uh, any time when we are talking to going to talk to others i may need to meet somebody and then uh, my mind gets bogged down how will that person receive me uh, will that person uh, take my words seriously uh, will that person positively respond to what i am telling all thoughts keep on uh, just uh, Uh, crowding in my mind and then uh, therefore those thoughts already uh, make me doubtful and morose uh then there is no use going so that negative mentality already is playing through my body language it may not happen uh, that uh, i had heard a nice story long back that a, a man it is story of long time when there were no mobile phones not even phones probably everywhere and uh, a man was going in a lonely road driving and then uh, uh, that got a flat tire uh, at night there was nobody and so got a flat tire and now what can be done uh, so uh, he said no problem this happens so i have got you know, a spare tire i can put it on and go but as he climbs down takes out the spare tire uh, sees that his uh, that jack you know to lift the car up uh, that jack is not there in his uh, the car he has forgotten to bring jack with him to lift the car now it is a big problem so he started looking around is there somebody there uh, and 
uh, at a distance he saw uh, there is uh, some light there uh, and he, when he saw a little more closely he saw that it is a house so he decided to go there uh, because that man must be having car and must be having a jack i can borrow the jack and do my work uh, fine so but uh, as he started walking his mind uh, started thinking mm, that uh, uh, well that man may not be there at all at home who knows uh, and then mm, even if that man is there uh, maybe uh, he doesn't have a car or that car may be uh, away uh, or uh, like that all the negative thinking was going on even if suppose uh, he says he has a car he has a jack and says that well uh, i will not give you uh, well all these thoughts were going on and then well if he doesn't give what can i do i will say okay i don't want you jack and then at that time while this thought was on he pressed the doorbell a gentleman opens the door and he says i don't want your jack <laughs> because that is the thought process that was going on so uh, that is what happens with when we go with a negative attitude in life so this namaste helps us uh, to feel that reality in me and the reality in other is the same irrespective of our different uh, appearance different training uh, different languages that we may be speaking uh, irrespective of all uh, that it takes away the fear so that is uh, the practical importance of this namaste as it pushes us towards uh, this goal uh, it may appear to be a baby step at least it is a baby step it can be a big leap actually uh, because when we start recognizing divinity in others it starts having its own impact uh, it is uh, like you uh, let a, a ball down uh, on a staircase and then it goes on bouncing with greater and greater speed you might have given only a very slight push but then with every step it uh, Uh, gravity makes it uh, a bigger and bigger jump so also when we give uh, this divinity in us uh, this push namaste then it uh, has its own momentum gets generated you know uh, this momentum keeps on uh, pushing us Uh, or uh, pushing that manifestation of divinity in us more and more more and more and therefore this becomes really a very important spiritual practice uh, so uh, let us therefore uh, make this saying namaste uh, these words are very powerful words namaste sanskrit words Uh, if we do not uh, have it or do not want to use the sanskrit words no problem uh, choose any exactly uh, similar word that you may find uh, why i am saying namaste is because in regular american culture uh, there is no such word that comes if you say salutations Uh, that people will laugh what is this uh, if i uh, meet say raymond and say salutations raymond he won't under what is this so because that uh, thing has not been cultured or cultivated uh, consciously uh, we just as that uh, uh, pastor smith's video was telling we say hi why are hey, these things you know so it is so that is uh, not uh, very expressive of the common divinity in all so therefore this word namaste is uh, very useful you can coin another word but it is a coined word and one has to you know work hard to make it current namaste is already a coined word uh, 
uh, and it has spread uh, all over even uh, when uh, in the airports and other places when people see me and uh, they say namaste that person may not be indian uh, uh, a regular uh, american person says namaste uh, because they know this word namaste so uh, namaste is a great vehicle for our spiritual development as well as our day to day living with confidence uh, respecting each other loving each other and removing the hatred amongst us so namaste friends and we will sing a song together uh, i have requested peter to sing and the namaste song we sing it uh, here uh, often uh, and a nice song originally it was a long song uh, what is the name of the author bali hall uh, bali hall bani hall so bani hall wrote this song uh, and thank you charles it is uh, we have shortened it uh, a bit because it was very long uh, so uh, and peter uh, leads this song uh, in ma many of our services especially the universal brotherhood day namaste namaste i salute the divine in you in india they say what's so true i salute the divine in you you may be from africa you may be from asia you may be from australia but there's something the same in all of us namaste namaste i salute the divine in you in india they say what's so true i salute the divine in you You may be from America. You may be from Europe. You may be from the islands, but there's something the same in all of us. Namaste, namaste. I salute the divine in you. In India they say what's so true. I salute the divine in you. You may be a Christian. You may be Islamic. You may be Hebraic, but there's something the same in all of us. Namaste, namaste. namaste. I salute the divine in you. In India they say what's so true. I salute the divine in you. If you need him American a good is your Taoist or if you're a Hindu there's something the same in all of us Namaste namaste I salute the divine in you in India they say what's so true I salute the divine in you Namaste namaste I salute the divine in you In India they say what's so true I salute the divine in you I salute the divine in you Thank you Peter